Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man Stevens, Ryan, who the insert here, and the old guy, Rob Charney, is here. Yes, it is I. Okay, James, <laughs> you've got a complaint again? About what? Oh, okay. So. I've always got a complaint. Legend. Do you want a list? <laughs> no. So, legend. I can write you a list. I know, but I don't want to know the list. So, have you heard what <laughs> Warner Brothers is going to do? Uh, Warner, this time? Warner Brothers has said it's going to release in theater along with the same time releasing to oh, yeah. a streaming service. AMC has, um, apparently their CEO put a massive complaint out there. Legendary Pictures also may take legal action against Warner Brothers over Godzilla versus King Kong and the Dune movie that's going to be coming out next year. Because none of these, none of the movie houses and these big time uh, picture studios, none of them are particularly happy with this. I actually you blame them. No, you know whose take I really want to hear is the Wachowskis. I'd love to know what what yeah. they thought about that because because they always have an interesting take on things. I mean, I know what Tarantino thinks about that. I, you know what? I just think uh, with everything that's going on, it's going to be the new. <laughs> I hate this term, the the new norm. I think it's just the way it's going to be. I'm going to be surprised if Regal and AMC are be, going to be able to really survive this thing out because I don't believe any of any of the rules for movie theaters are going to change until mid-2021, maybe even later, maybe the last quarter of 2021. I, 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 hate- I, I definitely agree with that sort of a time frame only because uh, if they do the vaccine first of the year like they're talking about, by the time that gets filtered down to your average person and you start seeing the herd immunity, it's going to be later part, you know, at the very least next summer. Yeah. Well, the one thing about but COVID, the one thing about COVID is they're saying it may not be possible for herd immunity. So it could be 2022 by the time, by the, by the time they get, you know, the, all the, the, the treatments for it, because from last time I heard, they're saying they're noticing if you get a light case of it, they say when a couple of months, any cell, any uh, thing you had for it is gone. Uh, any of the animals. Yeah, yeah. I, you yeah. know, I, I, I think Ryan's got a point there. What's going to happen is this vaccine's going to come out. There's a couple of different companies making vaccines. And it's, it's, it's the trickle down to it gets down to, well, I'm probably, I'm going to be before you guys are, cause I'm going to be in the seniors class. And so I'm sure they'll give them the seniors, but you know, they're starting first with medical personnel. They get it first, first responders, they get it next, yeah you know, and <clears throat> then, uh, high risk individuals and children, uh, you know, what, whatever they'll get. And then they might go to a group of seniors. Okay. Seniors. Now you can get it. And so, then so everybody else, I actually heard something on the radio the other day that talked about high risk people, not only include the elderly, it includes people who are overweight and smokers. Oh no, true. Yes. And somebody like me who is asthmatic. So I was born with Spasmatic. this. Well, that's, that's been the case. Oh, asthmatic. Been, yeah. Been, you know, yeah. Well, I just I just thought it was there. I just thought it was interesting. Two conditions: the the smoking definitely is self done. Over being overweight isn't necessarily because there's genetic. Sometimes there's genetic cases yes, for right. it. No, there are. But I thought it was medical, I thought yeah. it was interesting that um, you really do need to drop a few pounds, though, John. Hey, this is uh, I, I I've got about twenty pounds I put on since COVID. I've, this is my protection. Actually, my it just occurred to me how long it's been since I've actually seen John in person. You could be fat now, and I just don't even know. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's not. He's not. I'm six five and two fifty. I'm I'm a uh, I'm a healthy a healthy, healthy. I'm healthy normal. You're a healthy normal guy. Health. Except all of a sudden this lisp is a little <laughs> hard to deal with. It's COVID. Um, <laughs> COVID lisp. See the interesting lisp. the interesting corona. <laughs> corona. I will say the thing about the. Uh, Warner Brothers is, I think this is going to come back to an argument between Ryan and I, where I think traditional movie houses are going to go out of business and it's going to be this boutique you know experience. What? I, fucking, I was thinking this morning. John is <laughs> and I right. I couldn't remember if I was just texting you uh, or texting you or James or, or if I actually said this on the show, but I fucking told James at the very least there could be a nuclear apocalypse tomorrow. And the following day, you'd be like, see, I told you we're right. Theaters were going down. 
<laughs> yes, that that's a hundred percent true. I'm gonna any, I, any fucking port in the storm, man, with your opinion on theaters being gone. You've had this opinion well before there was a plague. I would like to remind anybody. <laughs> By the way, it's the long game. Look, I'm right. The long game. I've been doing this since What's we started. The long game? That's it's right. Go supernova. The long, <laughs> yeah, the long prediction. Yeah, yes. you know that's the one. Yeah. And I recently heard of somebody who I thought this was interesting, is watching a YouTube show, seeing if you guys know who this is. Flavius Scorpius. Uh, no. Also known as Scorpius, between 68 and 95 AD, was, the, was yeah. a famous, if not the most, most famous, charioteer in Rome. Yeah, I was going to say, it's obviously Greek. So I thought this was interesting, because apparently charioteers can actually become free by their winnings. Well, that was that was the same idea when they the, uh, the gladiators fought in the arenas. The, the ones left standing could be, depending on how many fights he had, could be freed. So, according to um, Wikipedia, and this is confirmed by the, actually the show I watched, <laughs> unless they got it by Wikipedia. Yeah, they um, were in it trouble. says so. Scorpius rode for the Green Faction during his lifetime, accumulated two thousand and forty-eight victories. As one of the most famous drivers in Roman history, Scorpius earned an extraordinarily large sum of money. Larger is some uh, his income surpass, excuse me, surpassing that of professional Roman sponsors. However, he died at the age of twenty-seven. <laughs> Jesus, um, it was hey, it's a young man. Will sport. Pass, die young. Yeah, it, it, cool, yeah. Huh? that's uh, it. It was super interesting. Um, twenty-seven, you're middle aged to old. Janis Joplin, in that, Jimi Hendrix. If you're if you're in there in yeah, the, as a right. gladiator, so it was it was interesting because this the show was talking about how dangerous it was, and this guy I guess <laughs> did well. He did the four horses, and the, this this expert. Oh my god! And this expert was talking about really. There's only two drivers, you know, and the, and the rest are you know they're they're helping. And he said, so you got it. He's balancing four different reins, so he's got to lead one horse above the other in a turn and pull one mm-hmm. back, and it was. Mm-hmm. And according to an article I was doing a little extra reading, he said a lot of these guys would actually tie the reins around them for extra weight so they could lean back. He said in a crash, a lot of the times these guys, you know, if if they didn't get too hurt or if they were cognizant of it, they could cut the reins away. But if not, they would just, you know, they they called them like shipwrecks when they they crashed together. Oh, uh, okay. They couldn't come up with something more original. No, but apparently this this guy <laughs> is ship, on shipwrecks. Um, okay, he they they found his description and his um his likeness on tombstones mm. that were like other yeah. people. More than one tombstone, huh? Well, because I guess it was. It I guess was, you can just buy whatever you want. So, if I remember if correctly, money, if I remember can. correctly, they said you it was can. it was a sign of good luck or something like that, uh, like having okay. like somebody famous on your your tombstone and stuff. Oh, okay. I, I would like it to be known uh, that you you can have whatever epitaph you you want engraved on your tombstone it does not have to be accurate and now oh, no, that's yeah <clears throat> absolutely you can put every whatever you want and now per the calif now per the california supreme court you can get whatever you want on your li- on your license plate in the state of california oh uh, yeah there was a really uh, like including like like the, the swears and all that well, so that's that gonna be standing forever that's gonna be interesting because <laughs> there was a court case uh, a guy challenged california and i can't remember what the, what it was but he, what he wanted that they denied. But we should hope it was he, asked. Man. He put it in, it, 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 whatever it was. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember it. But the story goes as is that he applied for it. California denied it. He appealed the de- denial. Uh, they denied it again. So he got an attorney. They sued. <laughs> the state and then the state, of course, said, "Well, you can't sue us unless X, Y, Z." So they got X, Y, Z, and then they sued. It went to a court. Judge said, "Oh, you're right. The state can't just arbitrarily say because this group of letters might mean something uh, or not." I think I remember you talking about this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah. So the court it, case just just got approved, or they, they well, just got he, a verdict. He won. He he actually won. And so what that means is that uh, right now, the way it stands in California, from my understanding, is if you want a personalized plate and you want one that might be offensive, might be sexually driven, might be whatever you know crazy thing you want on it, you can apply for it and actually get it because they can't can't deny it. So could they put the N word on the license plate? Uh, you know, isn't that the good question? I, I the judge. Well, I mean, if you remove 
the vowels, I'm, I'm sure you could. Well, I mean, could you get away with it, though? I mean, because before it was, some of it was a matter of well, good taste. Like, you couldn't say F you and right. yada, yada, yada. Right. There were there were normal offensive terms, offensive you know, terms for people, uh, swear words, whatever it may be. Those are automatically out. But so, so people were getting inventive and making up certain things, yeah. and, you know, and so... Right. Uh, the state would either say yay or nay. Somebody sitting there looking at that all day long, that's his job, right? To sit there and look at all these letters and say, okay, well, I think those letters means I hate, I hate you or I hate a, a group or I hate a race or I, you know, whatever it may be. And he'll interpret that. And the letters could literally be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And he could say, no, I'm sorry. Those are offensive terms. Yeah. So that was the problem. There's there, a, you know. To say that's also working restaurant's name, there's a restaurant name near me called So Foking Good. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. That yeah. one always makes me laugh every time um, I see it. That's a so good one. You would never guess a legendary trauma entertainment movie is being reimagined. Peter Dinklage is going to star in the new Toxic Avenger. <laughs> Oh, nice. So apparently Toxie is shrinking. Hmm. Um, but well, I'm, radiation does have an interesting effect on people. I have to admit, I like Peter Dinklage, so seeing how he would actually play this off could be fun. Um, a contemporary reimagining of Trauma Entertainment's successful 1984 low-budget action comedy hit, The Toxic Adventure, is steeped in environmental themes and subverts. Have you guys never seen it? I mean, the, the deadline article is like trying to describe something that everybody I know have seen. I, um, <laughs> when a struggling... I don't think Rob's seen it. Rob, mm -hmm. have you seen, have you seen Toxie? Yes. The Toxic... Oh, you have. Okay. I have. He's seen, he has seen some trauma movies. He may not have known it at the time, but he's seen some trauma movies. Um, he hasn't, he hasn't <laughs> yeah, seen. Yeah, I'm an old guy. I don't know what I'm watching. So. Well, no, I mean. Thanks, well, John. Well, have you seen. You just a, slammed me. Well, have you seen movie. Tromeo and Juliet, Class uh, of Newcomb High? You know, like, those aren't movies that you would have normally. I know you. You would never. I don't think you would sat down, sat down for some of these movies because they were awful. Probably right. I probably would not. I mean, this is, yeah. Um. However, I want to see a class of Newcomb High remake. That would be great. <laughs> okay. I just think it's interesting that they're they're starting to do, you know, redo trauma films. It doesn't say if it's going to be... Who's they and where is it going to be? You know, what streaming service are you going to be on? Here, here's my pet peeve. Talk about your show like you want. You want to talk. And then I got another pet peeve to go about this. Because the point is, who's going to stream... The this, this show, theoretically, that you're talking about. Well, if this is in, if if it's done by Troma, it's going to be available everywhere. If if it's by somebody else, it may be locked into something else. I didn't see any, the the article where it. I I'm assuming it's by Troma because they're still around. I don't know if they're still active though. I don't know. Do, so so I'm I'm starting to get this real, real freaking pet peeve about all these separate streaming services. Watch this now on Netflix. Watch this now on YouTube. Watch this now on uh, CBS All Access. Watch this on uh, the Peacock. Watch this on Pluto. Watch this on <laughs> Hulu. Watch. I mean, my God. I mean, I I, I I wouldn't mind being a cord cutter, but it, but by the time you start paying for all these services, uh, you know, you're, you're you're streaming all these things because these you want to get these shows from from everything. You're going to be paying a freaking fortune. Well, this is why I think most people are going to be doing like maybe two. You could do like the 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 Hulu Disney Plus deal that comes with ESPN Plus. It's like fifteen bucks a month, and like Netflix, or if you do Amazon Prime. I think between I think between that, I think you're getting most of them. But you're nah, right; you're, you're not going to see nah, most TV. For instance, anything that's CBS driven, it's not going to be on anything else other than. CBS All Access. Now I'm finding uh, uh, we have DirecTV. And right now, DirecTV and the owners of our local ABC station, which I believe is Channel 10 uh, here, they're in, uh, and they own a number of stations, they're in a fight. They can't agree on how much to pay. So anybody that's got DirecTV right now is completely locked out of um, uh, any, any uh, ABC programming. Period. And and the other thing that's really in, 
irritating. You used to be able to say, okay, so West Coast was having a problem, or I wanted to show it before, I wanted to see it before I had to wait to 9 o'clock uh, our time so I could actually, you know, watch it at uh, 6 o'clock uh, East Coast. I'd go to the East Coast channel and watch it. Well, now I guess uh, the FCC had a big battle about uh, the, the the local uh, stations not wanting to be uh, letting people uh, see an East Coast station because the advertisements are not the same. They're different people advertising, you know, doing the they're advertising. They're losing revenue. So they're losing revenue. You know, so... And you're getting commercials for Dave's fucking used car lot and Schenectady. I, I can't stand commercials. I am, mm -hmm. you know, I have been for years recording. I almost, I, I record virtually everything that I watch. Because watching anything now, let me ask you. is killing me. Let me ask you, Rob. Yep. Because this, this happens to me all the time to where if I actually end up hearing or seeing a commercial, I almost become physically angry. <laughs> like that's how little <laughs> advertisement I see anymore is that it makes me viscerally fucking pissed uh, when I see a commercial. I... Like like in between, like, like my TV show stops. And I see a Chevy truck. I want to fucking murder. <laughs> <laughs> I am almost at that level. Uh, so in, unless it's sports, you know, if I'm watching football or whatever it may be, I kind of stand it, but I, I just disappear at commercials. I mean, you know, but uh, you know, I, I am I am proud to say that I that I have started paying quite a bit for my for my television. But um, you know, now that I've retired undefeated, I, I feel that I can brag about. I, I've been pirating shit, and I'm, I, I don't know if I'm proud of this, but I am to a certain degree, um, since, like, maybe 04. I mean, uh. somewhere somewhere around there. Um, I started, like, just finding streaming things online, and ever since then, I basically, like, like vowed to the stars that I would never see an advertisement again. Yeah. You know, so now the ones that I see, I, I look up. I fucking pay for YouTube premium. Right. Because I hate ads that much. Oh, I, I I'm with you. Really, I'm See, totally with you. I don't so know if I've done that. Here's here's <laughs> it's going pretty far. So here's the <laughs> issue. Since I actually don't no, mind. Now, bro. I'm, I'm, well, I don't I'm, I'm mind sick. some commercials because as somebody who's trying to get a popular podcast, aka Mad Trio <laughs> podcast, to make some sort of revenue, I need commercials. So to so some degree, you need commercials uh, to help pay. The, the content, because otherwise, everything you love and like is going to go away. Maybe we can start our own premium service and say, pay us, you know, $5.95 a month, and you can get our show without ads. If we were Howard Stern, now, I guarantee look, you could do that. I, I, would, um, I, would, I would like you to say, for the record, um, that if this ever becomes, you know, anywhere near the popularity that we get advertising, I will sell out. So fucking fast, <laughs> it will make your head. <laughs> I have no loyalty to this this philosophy whatsoever. Oh, so you, you, like, you, if you, you pay me to like commercials, there you go. All of a sudden, I'm on board. Hey, man, I'm with it. So there you're not going to become yeah. I become fucking Joe Rogan talking about nine minute commercials before his fucking podcast starts. <laughs> oh, so you're 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 more like D. Snyder. You're not going to die on this cross. Hell no, no, man. And I'll, I'll be like fucking Gene Simmons from Kiss talking about selling fucking air guitar strings. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, my, my favorite comment of D. Snyder's, he said, you know, unlike all these bands who keep guard, uh, keep retiring, I've never said shit. He, I've never said shit. He said, I'm a whore. I'm just an expensive one. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, you know, I'll. Yeah, yeah. If if you're out there, and I'm not. I'm cheap as fuck. I, I'm I'm, <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a, a really really dirty whore. Like yeah. I I would when love. It comes down to it. I was your girlfriend in the room because I'd really love to hear what see where her reaction was when you said you're a dirty whore. I would be hilarious. Oh, she she will she will pinch me out if that's what it takes. That's you know? funny. Hey, she's James, like, are you are you going to get money from these advertising people? I'll be like, yeah. She's like, go go do whatever you got to do. Yeah, hey, James, exactly. I think you, I think I found you can get another source of revenue as talking to Amber to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ryan. It's like you need a you get a finder's fee. <laughs> um, yeah, I I saw a funny T-shirt once. Uh, I'm not gay, but twenty bucks is twenty bucks. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, 
All right, I got I, a question for you guys. Yeah. I, you know, I was looking at, I'm trying to find a list of, you know, canceled shows on Netflix. Watch a lot of stuff on Netflix, right? Came across the show that's getting renewed, which I guess is a good thing. It's called Another Life. Never heard of it. So I'm looking at it. IMDb gives it five stars. I'm looking at the ratings. It was, uh, it's a sci-fi show, show um, starring, and what's her name? She, her name was, um, she was on Battlestar Galact Galactica. Let's see. Oh, the blonde? The blonde. Uh, the chicken oh, played uh, Starbuck? Ka Katie uh, Shekhoff. Yeah, Katie yeah. Shekhoff is her name. And anyway, she's, I guess, the star of the show. And everybody is watching has raved about it. I've never even heard about it, and it's going into season two. So now I found another show that I have to go oh, ahead and try to binge. Wait a second, I I have heard of this, and it's not even it's not that old. It might be like might have only been out for a couple of months. Oh, well, it's uh, it started last year, first season, twenty nineteen. <clears throat> what season is it going into now? So it's going into season two now. Uh, it starts in 2021, so it took uh, almost two years. <laughs> it must be tough filming and anything, but uh, well, I guess the, yeah. So, I, I'm curious how long is each season because you know it went back. It went uh, from thir 13 episodes. 13 that's standard, and that's what it went for. Well, because that's the weird thing about me about modern TV is it did more of I know like uh, it now because it used to be 25, 24 episodes, and right. then it, it changed. Right. I know a lot of other countries. I think. Uh, Japan has seasons like that. That'll be 13 episodes and it just ends it and randomly shows up again. Yeah. Well, some... that's, that's kind of Netflix-ish, flick -ish, if that's a word. <clears throat> they, they tend to do that. A lot of their stuff since, tends to be 13 episodes or thir you know, for whatever reason. And then it may not be back on well, for two years. Probably, honestly, it's because it's, well, it's cheaper I, that way. Because they can, they can do half I, a season, I, you know, 13 episodes, and if it doesn't do good, they're not into it no, too yeah, much. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they, they like to do both. Well, the, the two-year gap thing is Netflix likes to, and I'm speculating here, I have I have no inside information on this at all. Um, although people just assume that I'm talking out of my ass, right? <laughs> no, they assume uh, that you anyways, know what you're uh, talking about. Don't assume he knows <laughs> what he's talking about. Uh, this is coming from a man who lied to most of his movie reviews. fucking believe you. Yeah, um, I'll believe oh, yeah, you. Go for course. it. I didn't. <laughs> we did two. Uh, we, we did around two hundred two hundred episodes. You know how many you watched three. <laughs> so the, yeah, the yeah. number well, of how episodes many have I seen previously. <laughs> no, true. I don't know. <clears throat> so, uh, episodes doesn't uh, mean. Although thirteen seems awfully light for a series, right? As well, far as yeah. So they, I think that's part of the reason that they're able to do so many different things, give so many projects the green light, is that. They're not they're not doing this like uh, bite off more than you can chew sort of order with the thirteen or twenty six twenty six obviously being more untenable, but um, but if, if that that number doesn't really mean anything the way that it did anymore, you know people don't have to take those mid season breaks the way they used to. You can they they've got the the benefit of being able to stagger something, but they also want to see the feedback and have it be able to find its its life. You know, like people might not watch it when it's coming out, but, you know, eight months later, they might find it and it might find that sort of cult following. And then they order the new season to come back um, and they start filming and it takes a year and, right. and all of that. See, I, um, I also think 13 seasons, like I said, 13 seasons, you're into it enough to get to see if people like it and you're not into it enough that you're going to be upside down. Yeah. And, and also, they've been doing a lot of those, like you were saying, the, the miniseries types of things. Uh, the British style, hey, this is 13 and done. You know, we know how it starts, we know how it ends, and we're not, we're not greedy. I, I really like that those are coming back. You know, um, just this neat little story that's not an hour and a half. It's a TV show format, but it's not something where the writers get sick of writing it after five years and they're doing it just for a paycheck. See, part of me misses like that. Like next generation of Star Trek was like that. I miss the the, I, I miss kind of each equ uh, each episode being non sequitur. I mean, as much as I like television, actually, like TV nowadays, everything so has a plot. So each episode makes sense. could could stand on its own. I miss that to some yeah, okay. degree. I, yeah, well, because everything I now it. everything now has to, mm -hmm. you know, everything I, now. I like. I'm kind of tired like of episodic. Some... You could 
You can do I both. Like you could storylines. Well, yeah, also, I like you could be a mix. Yeah, you could keep a small storyline running along the season and still have individual shows. And I mean, I, I haven't been able to watch regular consecutive like television for quite a while, but when I was really watching it, everything just seemed to be uh, it con- just seemed to be dial like really dialed into completely episodic content, and it just and I I thought for some for a little bit I think it ruined. I think it ruined it a little bit because every, every, every part of the story, every plot in the episode right. drove, drove to the, uh, driven to the end. And I thought you're losing to me part of the spontaneity of it a little bit. Well, what, what happens is if, if you get people new interested and they start mid season and, and you know, the, <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Let's take, let's take right now my, my obsession with Mandalorian. Okay. If you take these Mandalorian episodes as a single, they call them chapters, as a single chapter uh, alone, if you walk right in the middle of it, you're not going to have a clue what's going on. So I'll, I'll be honest with that. That's the, maybe the one downside to Mandalorian is that if you don't start from the beginning and you don't understand what's going on, you're not going to really get an episode. You know, you, you start with one, you, you end up at 13. Yeah. So episode I, eight, and- you're not going to get it. I do have a question. But that's what I liked about that show is that it takes the best of both worlds. It takes the, hey, this week is the new adventure of Mando. What's he getting into this time? But it follows that through line that you want to start from the beginning, which people have the luxury of doing. So it's not like you have to make that show where episode 33 might be that person's first episode. Um, What was it? Stan Lee uh, said that about comics, like every comic is somebody's first comic. I, no, I yeah, yeah, well, now I live in the age of Amazon. I can go back to the beginning, dude. Right. I do have a now question is for, for Ryan and James who know a little bit more about Star Wars than say my dad and I, would you be able to jump into with your knowledge of Star Wars and maybe the, the, the extended universe, et cetera, would you be able to jump into Mandalorian and, and have some sort of clue? Or is it so separate from everything that you know that you actually would have to start at the beginning? Well, the whole story is is separate. <clears throat> you're you're gonna you're gonna pick up things that other people don't, but you don't have to be a Star Wars fan to like this show. Well, I mean, like, and, <clears throat> would you be able to jump into say you say if you were a Star Wars nut, could you jump into Episode Five and within like say twenty minutes, you already have a, no, a, a okay? No, the, the yeah, whole no. story is trying to tell you a unique a unique thing. Like, uh, and it takes place in a in the thing I've always liked about Star Wars is that anybody. Anytime somebody's telling a story, they can't retcon any any canon. So they have to choose this gap of time or this other place and tell the story that has that's either taking place in conjunction with something else or in a gap of time where nobody's got any lore to it. Um, but they can't just like willy nilly make some Star Wars thing without it falling into some sort of canon. This just takes place four years, uh, four or five years after Return of the Jedi. But you don't have to necessarily know, that, you know, going into it. It's yeah. you know, this, this standalone story. Does it help the context of it at all? Yes. I oh, think sure. I, I, I think it's getting things that other people aren't. Uh, yeah, I, so we're going to jump a little bit more into films if, if Rob doesn't have any more to add to that. Because I just saw this and I thought it was interesting was... Um, okay, go ahead. Matthew Vaughn is planning something like seven more Kingsman film as part of the company's expansion plans. Hmm. So here's my... Huh, the, really? So here's the question. <clears throat> I liked Kingsman. Do you think it could survive? Because to me, the second one got close to kind of jumping the shark. To me, it, 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 almost, ruined, it almost ruined it for me. Because the first one had this James Bond-esque, like, like if looks could kill, but on a better level, not so playing to the college, the kid crowd. What do you three think? I mean, I think that movie started <laughs> that like, was me. like in in moment one. You know, it, it's not like it was uh, taking itself too seriously from the get go. I know what you mean by the second one, but it just seemed too goofy. I mean, I there's some good scenes. People in are it. going to start. <laughs> I think people are going to start liking that kind of fun versus the real story, you know. 
Well, I, I think if you compare it to James Bond, like take even Daniel Craig, I think today's I think, it's, today's, I think you're doing a disservice by comparing it to James Bond. First of all, well, I'm, I'm taking I understand. It, I understand that the storyline hold on, hold has on. similarities, but you're you're comparing not, it to something it's not. Well, you, <laughs> if you actually just let, let me finish, I was saying the seriousness of the James Bond, you like can the Daniel do it Craig. Though. Well, because it's a, basically it's a spy movie. So if you take the serious, so? if you take the seriousness of James Bond, which what right now is the gold standard of spy movies, to say if looks could if looks could kill, which is a '90s you know kind of teenage comedy, the spy movie, it's somewhere in between. Because I think you have to have a spectrum to compare. I don't it to. think they were trying to be a James Bond. Oh yeah, they were. By by default, no, if you're going to have that ridiculousness, it is. Well, it's either no, that Austin Powers trying to be the old goofy James Bond when you had goofy villains explaining their plans. I mean, it was almost a, a satire. Oh, the whole job, uh, Roger people, Moore years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 And because people misremember how fucking silly those movies were, and you look back on them with <clears> these, <throat> and I don't want to say rose-colored glasses, but you think of them as these serious spy movies. They fucking weren't the goofiest things of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you take like you know, like the Pierce Brosnan, what I think was the the seriousness with the goofy gadgets. The the one my dad mentioned, Roger I think Moore. was Roger Moore. I think was the height of the goofiness. Yeah. I think Kingsman is a little bit more goofier. I'd say Woody Allen is the most goofy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a James but Bond film. But that's my film. point: is that Kingsman is is making fun of of the goofy parts of it. It's giving that to you, you know, on a, on on a bridge. But so or I, unfiltered, rather. I guess my question is: Do you think you could they could make seven more films and not basically by be Fast and Furious? movies you know which no. people see fast and furious movies but they, you know it's the same plot the same basic idea it's basically retreads well, that's itself what james that's what james bond was but you james think bond was the fast and furious of our dad's age but do you think would you think huh. it would hold the people's interest enough you got a point no oh sure i think people who like the franchise the same with fast and furious you're gonna get the nerd crowd watching those fucking movies forever i guarantee you have my girlfriend's money for life <laughs> Well, at least we know you're going to be seeing it for a long, the, all those movies for a long time. So uh, I want to go back to Mandalorian. Yeah, I, mean, look, I, want, I want my Mandalorian guys. Yeah. Because it's not John. All right. So did you see the latest episode? I did. I did not see yesterday. Oh, uh, Boba Fett, man. I know. I'm sorry, man. Uh, I'm fucking up. Oh, uh, now I can't, I can't talk about it. I don't want to ruin it for you. Since when? Uh, all right. I'll ruin it for the, you. At the same time. No, don't. <laughs> Do. <laughs> Ruin it. So also, uh, Ming Na Wen also makes an appearance in it as well. If you guys don't know that, who, who that is, that's from um, Agents of Shield. She, she was the, ah. she was the lady that did all the kick ass the, kicking. The Asian chick, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy, uh, you are no, you Asian know, chick. Didn't... Can you imagine how many people are going to jump on that? <laughs> with, with, with that name, name is good smooth, going. Okay. That, the, yeah, with that name, you think you think you even needed to say that? Yeah, but I've only seen a handful of Agent of Shield movies, uh, seasons. Oh, too, episodes you're too. kidding! I, I don't. I don't I have a whole lot of time. I couldn't get into Agent so. of Shields. I couldn't. Agent of Shield, whatever. I don't know. I you just couldn't, couldn't get, get into it. it. I, I I actually liked it. The I first few seasons. Right, sorry. The first season was good. The rest, I tried. I I, I watched the whole first season, and after. I, like the first, hey, I, couple of I, I'll the be the first season. to say they kind of went off the rails, but the last two seasons I kind of enjoyed because it really got kind of, well, the effects were good. The, a lot of the things they were doing, I thought were done really well and it, it became fun. It Wait, was, I mean, just, what are we talking about? Agents of shield. Agents of shield. Oh, Agents yeah. of Shield. Yeah, Marvel's oh, Z. Like I never got into that one. Oh, yeah. Well, I tried. I did. I was just I telling did. Rob I tried and I couldn't do it. Yeah. They had, so, they, they did have, um, oh, freaking what's his, uh, Stuff. Oh, the 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 flaming skull guy. I can't remember his name. The uh, uh, red skull. No, it, it was leaving? on. It was a Nicholas Cage, Ghost Rider. They oh. did have Ghost Rider on the. Oh, and, and, Rider. and those episodes were cool, but apparently it would say more yellow and orange. <laughs> it was fire. <laughs> I didn't say a color. Whatever. I mean. Whatever. Oh well. All right. So get your Mandalorian in when you can. It. It. Oh. I thought it was just like way cool. Yeah. By the way, Christopher That's, Nolan apparently hates the Warner Brothers thing too. Yeah, which is, I read that article. He hates it. They think the, he thinks that uh, Warner Brothers. What, what is their streaming thing? Um, 
What's this? Well, what's what's their idea? What's their solution? Is anybody offering a different a different plan? Because I mean, you know, no, I, it's get your money. You know, you pay me. Fucking... It's basically see it in the theaters. You see it on home and HBO Max. And that, that's yeah, that's, yeah. A, a, HBO well, Max. Right, that's the HBO one. HBO Max is a HBO Max is a streaming <clears throat> service that's paid for. Right. So they're obviously getting revenue specifically for that streaming site. How much of that is going to? the filmmakers as far as getting their money or is it all going to the studio with their I, deal? You know, if you, you think know, about if it's a compromise, if you, then, th- if you take a month, let's take a monthly service of, of an average of, let's say $10 a month. Some of them are higher. Some of them are lower. Right. And how many people out there now on under COVID-19 are streaming their revenues <clears throat> have to be way more right now than they ever were in movie theaters. Oh, right. Yeah. So, are, I mean, how much of that cut is going to Warner Brothers and how much of Warner Brothers is distributing that to the films that are being released? Yeah, well, we won't um, know that. Those are numbers we'll I, never know. I did but. hear for, like, the movie Trolls but, I mean, that came you can out. Imagine, I, I you think, can imagine that Warner Brothers has done the math on, on how many people they project to go to the movie theater versus stream it online. How many people <laughs> waited for the new releases that have been out to just come on DVD because they can't go to the theater anyway. Right. I did. Like, we just fucking watched uh, the new Mulan a couple of days back. As oh, God, I did not like it. Uh, oh, good, I, I, won't, so I won't watch it. I am so glad I didn't fucking pay to watch that. <laughs> Wait, yeah, watch... wasn't it like 15, 20 bucks when they released it? Oh, on it was just, ridiculous. On Even Disney streaming. On top of the monthly fee. Yeah. So here, here, I don't understand. On you top, got Amazon yeah. Prime. I don't know if you guys do that, but I got Amazon Prime. And that movie yeah. came out yeah. and said, okay, watch this movie. You click on watch this movie, and it goes, oh, $24.95. This was on release date. Right. And what it's going to cost you on top of you're already paying for Amazon Prime. So, so, yeah. so that basically they're trying to recoup that theater money. They want two asses and two seats. I guess. No, what they're basically saying is you purchased into the platform to be able to actually see the movie, but you still got to purchase the movie. Yeah, it's re- that, that pissed me off. Hold on, hold on. A little bit of a, I do want to say something. I Some, was going to say, I want to give a pass to Amazon Prime because I pay for Amazon Prime and, and – and all of a sudden, they gave me free shit to watch. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's true. there are some <laughs> platforms that are doing it differently, and I don't know which one it is. Some platforms are giving you a 24 hour to access to watch it as many times you want. Some platforms right. are it's one or done. Um, so I think it depends on how they do it. I have heard through the beginning with that, that Trolls two cartoon movie that came out. I heard whoever released it just kicked ass on it. Um, so mm-hmm. much so that AMC actually was bitching about how how dare you do this. So they are getting Trolls more. Trolls too. It, yeah, it was a. It's, it's a, a, kid, ki- it's kids a kids show. Movie. Yeah. yeah, I understand that. So I think I do think that it's, it's going to become the way things are. Yeah. But his his comment was basically that they didn't. He says in this article. Let's see. That, uh, Nolan told ET online in recent interviews that he's been in disbelief, especially in the way which they did it, alluding to how the alleged many filmmakers weren't giving much notice at all. There's the, there's such a controversy around it because they didn't tell anybody. In 2021, they've got so, the, some of the top filmmakers in the world. They got some of the biggest stars in the world who've worked for years in some, some of these cases and the projects very close to the hearts that are meant to be in the big screen experience. So that's part of it is the fact it's it's what Ryan talks about. It's the communal big screen experience versus um, what Quentin Tarantino hates, which is, you know, television. You know, he wants the... I, you know, I understand that. Maybe I was a movie fan. I mean, I we usually went to see a movie twice a month, uh, you know, at, at our local theater. And so I was one of those people willing to pay the money to go go for that big experience. Because, you, you know, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, I grew up at fucking movie theaters, man. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't. I, I have a 65-inch <laughs> television. I don't care how big you get. It's still not the same as going in the movie theater. It, you know, it's not. It's not. It's not. But, hey. I mean, shit. Uh, between, between me and James, back when you lived down here in SoCal, um, we had a couple, couple few hundred movies, maybe. I mean, let's go with a couple hundred conservatively. Yeah. Um, and we were fans of watching shit we'd seen a, a bunch of times uh, again and again. We'd go to the movie theater constantly. Well, we could have very easily just stay yeah. at home and watch the movie. Right. Well, I do. I do miss but, it. I do miss the experience. Hopefully, it will come back at some point. Hopefully, uh, AMC and Regal can ride this out. I can't imagine the amount of money they're <laughs> they're bleeding. I, I think, I, and I haven't read any of the articles you guys are talking about. But is that something they've mentioned? Like you guys are. 
are basically writing off the movie theaters, so we might not even be able to release anything next year if there's nowhere to release it. Like, well, there, there's I, a talk because I Regal, can see that as an argument because I, I haven't seen it exactly expressed, but they've been saying it. But there's some it's there's a hint to that yeah. because Regal literally shut down everything. They made the decision that yeah. they're, they're they're done. They shut, they closed the doors, they've locked it. Everybody's fired. It's done. So wow. uh, AMC, I can't believe it. yeah. And so AMC is still kind of running at select theaters, but I, but, but again, they have to do it in, if, if it's in California, I think it's 25% of capacity. Uh, but now I think on the latest with Newsom theaters are completely closed. So AMC is even out of it now. So I can't imagine the rents they're paying in all these, you know, super malls and places that their theaters are at. And they're just sitting there bleeding money. Now, how long can they do that? Not very yeah. long. I, I yeah. wouldn't think so. so. I mean, HBO or HBO, if Warner Brothers does this, it basically says to them, like, like I was saying, like you're we're writing you off as unsalvageable. Therefore, <laughs> like you know, with with this little amount of revenue, if, if it wasn't going on to a streaming service, you might be able to keep the doors open, kind of thing. But with this, you talk me into staying home and watching all of those movies, right? See. I don't know for, for me personally. And then right now it's just not possible. I just, I don't know if I'd ever watch, I wouldn't be able to watch a movie into completion. If I did it at home, I've got too much shit to do. If I like to say the new Dune movie, that's supposed to come out next year. If I was to watch it at home, it may take me a week to actually yeah. sit down and no, watch it. That's understandable. I mean, there's too many other things going on. And, and you have a young son at home. So that, 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 that also uh, plays into it. But uh, you know, where I could sit, and watch the whole thing, and but it's still not the same. I mean, I think you're absolutely absolutely right. You have the distractions sitting in your front room or your media room or whatever it may be. You still have those distractions. You're probably looking at your phone while the movie's going on, yeah. or you know, doing whatever. And so it, it you aren't going to watch it as as you would if you're sitting in a the theater. I, I, be saying. I, I kind yeah. of, I, I kind of, and, and I would like to point out again for the record. Um, John was right. That uh, I once drove to Fresno to go watch a movie with you two. I live in Los Angeles, California. You guys live basically Sacramento. There, <laughs> we both drove to Fresno. That's like a three yeah. and a half hour drive, easy. To go watch Kill Bill, Kill Bill One, if I'm not mistaken. What was it? I think it was Kill Bill One. We Kill Bill Tarantino One was coming yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, you guys are really couldn't, diehard. I couldn't believe Tarantino was making a fucking movie, and James was always my Tarantino guy, and and Charlie was <laughs> was right there. And I'm like, dude, I'll meet you in Fresno. <laughs> uh, well, at I, least it was a decent movie. I I yeah. I, yeah, I mean, so th thank God you didn't hate it. No, there, <laughs> there is yeah, really. there is a you question know? is. How will this change filmmaking? Because a lot of these artists like Tarantino only make movies for the big screen. It's their vision. It's their goal. It's their artistry. Was it's Well, because they can't do it now? Of course well, how, they're going to have to change. Well, no. Will it change the feel of movies? Because let's, let's be honest. There's, there's a difference between like a cinematic movie and a movie made for TV. Even like these really amazing movies, like the TV shows, still have a different feel mm -hmm. than, than a movie. So mm -hmm. are... Is that going to change it to enough that people are just going to go, eh, you know? Because uh, you already see that now with, like, all they do is tentpole movies. I think there's going to be a lot of pent-up no. frustration of all of us that want to go to the movies and see the movies. So, I mean, uh, if all goes well, sometime next year, maybe even if it's this the same time next year, we'll be able to go back to the movies again. And uh, I think I think we're all looking looking forward to that. And as far as the, you know, the filmmakers making these movies, I don't think knowing a little bit about the inside and how they make these movies, I don't think they're going to change the way they're movie. They're going to make the movie. They're still going to make it for for the movie theaters. They're still going to make it for cinematic. And well, depending on how long this goes on, because I was thinking that exact thing. Like like what happens when the the, the filmmaker starts saying, "Okay, I'm making this for the format it's going to be shown on." Right. And, you know, the movie theaters are, are, I mean, hopefully it comes back. So that's not the case. I, you know what? You, we, it's going to come back. We, it's got to come back. I got to believe, sit here and say, yes, I believe it has to come back. So with that I'm said, with you, yeah, if I, if I'm making a movie, 
Uh, I'm going to make it for the movie theater. Now, the reason I say this is because the movies that we see streaming and whatever, they they are are, are compressed and re-edited and new soundtracks are put on. They're actually done, redone for the streaming service. So they still have the version yeah. that's for cinematic, and now they have the version that's for streaming just as well. So, yeah. they, you yeah. know, so why not continue making movies for cinematic? The, the, so... Here's sure. my thought on that. The last estimate I saw, it may be this time next year before maybe potentially a release in COVID. Right. I have a feeling that the movie theater, if any survive, it, I think it's going to go back to this three screen days. You know, you you may have a four screen theater. So I think there's going to be an influx of different content that may... I think there's going to, I don't know, I, I just think the big box office movies are going to be more, and I think there's going to be more content coming into TV that may not have the same TV feel. But we're also in a, a great time for science fiction and all these TV you know, movies. So the other point that you bring up that, that, that I also think about is the difference in expense between making a movie for, for, for the big screen versus making a movie for streaming for the small screen and the, the difference in the expense to make that movie. That may be the one thing that's going to drive more of this stuff to be to streaming because it's going to cost much less <clears throat> to make a movie simply for streaming than it's going to be for the cinematic uh, viewing. I, my opinion, from no, what we, I've been seeing. You always got to keep in mind the profit. No, you're you're absolutely right. You 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 can't discount the idea that these are shareholders uh, that we're talking about that are that are wanting to make a profit. Yeah. Yeah, so that's I think that's what it's going to come down to. So they're they're figuring out every which way to squeeze squeeze every dime you can out of everybody that's you know streaming now, and there, there's so many different streaming services. And if I was to sit here and think, okay, I'm going to make this movie, I'm going to make this blockbuster movie, but you know what, I can do it cheaper because it's going to be for <coughs> streaming. So I don't need the big expense of everything that that I can actually do now. Um, with all my technical folks and CGI guys and everything else and do it for streaming and make it for much less money, but yet still have all these people willing to pay me uh, a fee for watching it on online. So here's, here's, here's a trip. So the first Rambo movie, it's a trip. The first Whoa. Rambo, the first Rambo movie in 1982 cost $15 million. That's roughly $40 million in today's money. Okay. That's still a low budget movie. That was a pretty still expensive movie to make back in 1982. Back then, but now, now, you know what was a uh, more expensive movie to make than that? What? Howard the Duck. Well, yes. Well, here's here's the thing. Though. <laughs> Who's playing a game? It's hey. in James's. Uh, Come on, James. It's, tell yourself to little turn James. It down. Tell so, little James. Tell James Jr. Turn it down. So hey. here's here's hey. <laughs> here's here's oh wow back talking <clears throat> here's here's no, that's not what he said he said i love you too <laughs> <laughs> so here's Good for him here's the thing i think rob's 100 percent right because i think 40 million dollars now is tv money when you have yeah, like yeah. when yeah. you have like a hundred barely game of thrones money oh right? barely when you get like a hundred two hundred three hundred million dollars if you're talking about some of the avengers movies I think we're going to have a new influx of television movies or like HBO Max style movies. Because uh -huh. um, isn't that where we talked about the, oh, well, Justice League movie is coming to? Isn't yeah, it? Snyder Cut. Um, but that's already done. I mean, that was that was basically down to the final post-production. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, I think that's what's going to end up happening. I think these streaming services are going to do what, what was famous back in you know, my, our day and my dad's day is you're going to have a bunch of TV movies that just have a budget quadruple the size of a traditional TV movie. Well, there, I mean, I think hmm. everybody just realized that well, nobody you can put these movies anywhere that, that HBO was standing around the corner when somebody got rejected from Warner brothers and they're like, Hey, Hey, you still yeah. some money for that for that movie? We're here. Why don't, you, why don't you come on over here with me? Yeah, that exactly. You know, they're like like kissing at you from an alley. Hey, over here, you know, we've got money and you, we want to give it to you. We yeah. don't care what you do. We just like you as an artist. Yeah. Like, Wait, what? Yep. But nobody's going to be wanting to watch Hallmark, Hallmark, uh, Hallmark films <laughs> and be paying for it streaming. Nobody wants to see that year round. 
Okay, so since so Jay, they're going to be up in the budget. They, they, yeah, they're uh-huh. going to be up in the budget, but they've changed who they're doing deals with. There's no longer a stigma when it comes to wanting to put something on, on a streaming service versus putting up a movie. So Tom Hanks can go do some Netflix fucking movie and not feel like ashamed for it. Oh, yeah. He'll, you know, still, he'll still get it. Yeah, so James brought up Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. So, right. here, so Howard the Duck in 1986 cost $37 million to make. And 2020 money, that's $87 million. So that's not even <laughs> an Avengers level film, but that was an expensive film for back in the day. That, that, yeah. Well, how that, about, uh, that that was, what was that it? Was Roger Marvel Rabbit? Fucking comics, I would like to remind you. Yeah. So l- l- look up Roger Rabbit. Huh? Oh, that, yeah. Roger Rabbit must have, uh, yeah. Because that was right, wasn't that was like that was like the big breakthrough. Let's see, nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, yeah but that, that didn't that, bomb that though. Thing. No, it oh. didn't. So my curiosity is, what did it cost then to make make that movie? Because it was kind of groundbreaking at the time. Oh, that was a well, fantastically I mean, okay, groundbreaking so I, film. Time, I've got the numbers. All right, it's so, not the first time. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Mary Poppins had done the, the live action cartoon thing, albeit yeah, but not as well. Here. Yeah, if but that, that level, Roger that Rabbit really broke broke the barrier. I if, mean, it really. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to talk about like the live action inter- intermixed with cartoons, I mean, there were Songs of the South. There was one way before that with a dinosaur and somebody else. I think that was early color slash black and white. So the idea has been around forever. Um, the 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 yeah. major breakthrough that Rob was talking about was this is the first time that CGI was used to enhance. A computer was used to enhance that yeah. traditional animation. So according to this, the estimated box office, the estimated budget for this movie was a whopping seventy million dollars mm, yep. for 1988. So 88. that is a total of 153 million dollars, which is Avengers money. Wow. Yeah. So that's wow. that's in the right right in there. So so that was breakthrough. So now now you know why it costs so much to make these movies. So that's wow. So it was only an hour and forty four minutes. That's a really expensive minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a damn good movie, though. It was it still good. is. Oh, it's it's a, you know, so even good. watching it today, you know, I'll have to watch still it still like really holds up yeah. in comparison. Oh, it's a great oh, movie. Yeah, it does. So, yeah. <sighs> okay, so we're, we're winding. Have you guys seen the new Animaniac? No, no. no. I talked about a little bit uh, of this last week. Yeah, and you, it, okay. I. I Got into like what was it episode? I think I was all the way up in episode four or so, and I'm waiting for them to stop making fun of Hollywood not having fresh ideas. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's well, some truth know, to that. that, that, that is kind of their yeah. that's their shtick. That yeah, their, that's I their mean, shtick yeah, right now. Yeah. It was it, it's safe to do a sequel, right? Isn't that isn't that what yeah. the whole idea? So, or or and now that's prequel. Whole, the whole idea. It's the whole meta sort of idea of the show is like, hey, look, we're back and we're going to milk this for all it's worth. Um, and, and it's kind of right, right in your face with, with that fact, um, yeah. which, which I kind of like. But, but yeah, it is uh, a joke they keep repeating. So I, I do have an ending question, and this is for if anybody actually listens to it as well. Last question, then we're done. Do you think, what, mo- what movie do you think that comes out today that's going to hold up? And what movie do you think may not hold up as well? Because there's always movies that are a product of its era and always movies that go beyond it. So are we talking about this year that came out this year or within the past decade? Yeah, let's give it the last 10 years. That, that, that's, that's a little bit of a wider, wider range. Uh, <laughs> that's a hard I question. I got us on that one. Because I, um, I was thinking about this about the 80s. There's some movies that I think transcend that I don't necessarily thought would have, you know, and vice versa. Like oh, for, man. For, for, me, um, for, me, for the 80s, for me, it'd be Goonies. I liked Goonies as a kid, but I did not think it would transcend time as well as it does, even though it's a traditional uh, storytelling. I don't, I don't think Goonies holds up as well. I really don't. I think I think it's because of just the fact we're older. I think for kids, like if your son gets a chance to watch it, it's still going to get this, this that. No, that. He, he had he no really no wow. no yeah 
Just wait, just wait a couple of years on yours and have him watch it and see what he thinks. I mean, hey, my son's starting to get into Pokemon, so you never know. Yeah. Um, which one? Whatever's on Netflix. Okay, I, I in the I, past uh, ten years, support him so... getting into the original Indigo League, but I'm original one fifty. That's that's it. So All of this new shit drives me crazy. See, part of me thinks most of the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think, will hold up to some degree. Um, I think Guardians of the Galaxy. For sure. I think the Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, I think is evergreen. I think even more so than the rest of them, just because of the, the storytelling, the soundtrack. I think it's a movie that's going to gonna go for forever. I think well, that, it's, it's funny because the soundtrack is already, you know, time tested. That's why. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's one of those where you know that those songs can last forever because they already kind of have. And I would think yeah, I really don't. I can't think of one movie in the past 10 years that I think will hold up in another 20. I think Guy, I really can't really because to me it's Guardian of the Galaxy. I think even the Guardians of the Galaxy and all the Marvel films, I really don't put any of those on a on a timeless scale because I think what, as far as I, style and the acting goes, that will fade. Um, and I even think the graphics, I mean, they're great now, but. In 20 years, I mean, I think our even television screens, I think our media is going to age it. I think that will be the tell of it is the aging of that. I don't think the CGI is going to be so, as Jurassic Park syndrome. Yeah, I that's don't think it's going to have that's that. That's why I kind of, well, hold on. For the record, the original Jurassic Park is still, and I fucking mean this, it real enough. The oh no! I'm I'm okay. saying that I'm holding it up to Jurassic Park like as a standard. Well, the, the Jurassic Park, the CG in yeah, Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park does not great white buffalo. It, the the some of the the CG in Jurassic Park does not hold up as well. The traditional effects in there are yeah, like the T Rexes. The T Rexes and traditional effects are amazing, but some of the CG just does not hold up, and it's just Man, because of its know. time. I, I think they're they're blending aside maybe from a couple of small lighting issues. It's still it's still pretty fucking dead on. No, we um, just talked about Roger really Rabbit. Where you're not noticing it while you're watching it. Yeah, exactly. But I also well, think that's uh, the, the style, though. I, I still think it holds up. What I want to submit. True. The CG holds up because I think it's just the what style I the way it's done. For, for holding up is going to be anything that's, that's sort of period driven these days. Like anything that takes place 100 years ago or before. You know, I don't know if you said movies or TV specifically, yeah. but like Game of Thrones is probably going to uh, uh, age really well. Because Except for the last it takes season, place in a time where you where you can't date it, you know you have an or orchestra of music that could have been from any time. It fits well, well with the story, so it doesn't pull you out of the narrative because it's I, dated or. or I was like, gonna. I hundred percent agree. I was with gonna that. throw this one out. Um, Inglorious Bastards. This one, I mean, I was Fuck, thinking it yeah. wasn't going to be within a ten year, ten year period. It was in two thousand eleven, so it falls into place. But my only apprehension in bringing that one up was as, as ryan said it was a it took place in a specific time period and there's that one scene when they're unloading their magazines in a hitler's face and you can kind of tell that they switched it to a dummy type face i would say that movie only scene yeah, no but i like there. that dummy i was a fan I, of that i do too i laughed my ass with that <laughs> John and I burst out laughing our asses off during that entire scene because they literally stopped to reload and continue. Now, um, that's the only scene that I say won't hold up the time. It didn't even hold up for the time it came out. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, that one I can artistic. see. Yeah, I, that one, it's artistic, so I, I let it slide. But the fact that, I mean, he was being as graphic as he could with it. So, um that I, is one I will say will hold up. So the any Tarantino movie I think is going to be evergreen just because the people who like that type of movie, that's the type of movie those Except people are going to like. Yeah. I, I think the same thing with David Lynch. I think that's Kill gonna, Bill. Yeah. Well, Kill Bill definitely, but I think yeah. Yeah, I think David Lynch movies, Tarantino movies, those kind of niche directors, and I'm not using niche directors in small, but they have followings where people will drive to, say, Fresno to see it. Um, 
I think those are evergreen just because there'll always be people who particularly like those type of films. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, well, not except for mention, Jackie Brown, you get that bit of a slice of life of that time period where the time period is its own character, not not the movie being a product of the '80s. So there's a bunch of fucking '80s music in it. Like this movie takes place in the '80s. That's why there's '80s music in it. You know, uh, not because the director was super into Duran Duran at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Pulp Fiction, <laughs> for example. I ne- I think is always going to be evergreen. I I think that movie ages well because. Of the way it's actually directed, it's it's kind Same of with a, Reservoir Dogs. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it uh, takes place at a time where everything matches that time period, and you're there. You know, I I think the but new that, I think the new Star Trek movies, the the one with Chris Pine. I don't think any of those are going to age particularly no. well. But it, again, it's a Star Trek, so they're they're always going to be evergreen. Because like I said, <clears> the, the people who <clears> like that type of movie, Trekkies are willing to forgive. Uh, mistakes and, and no things. doubt sci-fi <laughs> all of the, the recent sci-fi Battlestar Galactica is going to hold up real well I mean if people still love the original BSG there's there's no doubt they're going to exactly. they're going to like the right correct and it's yeah. not, I don't think the future generations are going to look at the, the current BSRG and be like nah this is this is I can't even watch this it's so fucking bad you know as far as like the CGI or anything like that they had a lot of traditional effects on that show surprisingly enough which Very, I didn't know it was mostly traditional except for the space battle um oh maybe a couple of the cylon oh, no. things huh what we yeah i don't know i re- the, that's why i'm just saying it's it's hard to pick something that i think is going to hold up as well with all the stuff that is out there i mean i just don't see well, I, I don't. I, I can't say I've seen a lot of films well. that, that have come out that are timeless, like the like those. But I mean, even if we take those, what twenty years, there there was a twenty year span that we had that I mean, only a handful of films came out that were that we would consider timeless. So, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if if if, if you want to, the, the the best way I think for yeah, for, but that was in ten years, Ryan. I mean, for people like me, for example, I say, for example, if, if you're a big sci-fi fan and you want to talk like 50s movies, for example, there's a handful of sci-fi 50s in the movies that are like literally considered some of the best ever. Like Forbidden Planet is considered one of the greatest sci-fi films ever. Or you want to go from the 70s, you're talking about 80s, uh, the aliens. Well, there's so many even sci- if you just go with, with Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that was the 50s. Was oh, yeah. 59? <clears throat> Yeah. And that didn't have the, the Close crazy Encounters sci-fi the shit 50, going on like the Forbidden 80s? Planet. I think did. so. Well, because Close Encounters you know, of Forbidden, Forbidden Planet, yeah, that's that's, that's fifty Forbidden something. Forbidden Planet had a lot more going on, a lot more hardcore. Like you got to be really, really into sci-fi to watch that fucking movie. But Close Encounters was this like epic that that brought everybody into that world. It, it oh, it was average person. It was a true mind blower. To, to have seen yeah. it at the time when it came out in the movie theaters. I mean, it was unbelievable. You literally walked away. Uh, I did going. Wow. Yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. I would probably liken it to me, like leaving the matrix for the first time. Like fuck that movie was insane. So, right. Close encounters <laughs> of a third time yeah. came out in 1977. Oh, uh, geez. So oh, 77. Okay. Yeah. I, man, I was fucking way off. What am I thinking of? Well, cause the, the reason, the reason I said I was saying this, cause I was thinking about this as I was bringing this up is like, there was a ton of really shitty sci-fi movies in the fifties. I love all of them, but sure. not all of them were good. I mean, there's like the, there's some really. I dig me some uh, journey to the center of the earth type of shit, though. Yeah, or like uh, uh, voyage to the center of the earth. Are you going to talk about? Um... Yeah, wasn't that fucking Jules Verne? No, he... uh, the... H- H- is it H.G. Wells? How many leagues under the sea? Twenty thousand leagues, leagues under, under the, the sea. sea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or if you, was... or if you talk about like uh, Orson the, Wells. the Fantastic Voyage, there's there's a lot of. Great content. Yeah, but who if, did Time Machine? Yeah, that was H.G. Wells. That was H.G. Wells. He did uh, Journey, Center of the Earth, right? Yes. I believe that's right. By the way, if you guys want to see a really great, <clears throat> you ever, if anybody out there wants to do a, a, a to watch two different versions of H.G. Wells' time travel, there's a 1966 version of Time Machine and there's a non-modern one with Guy Pierce. It's a great study in studying how, like, filmmaking and what parts of story they kept. If you ever, guys, anybody out there actually want to spend time doing it, it's a very interesting to, to look at. Well, so that leaves us on lots of things to ponder for next week. Yep. 
So yeah. I think it's time to say goodbye. I was <laughs> Thank getting you there for everyone listening. I was getting there. So, so <laughs> John's wrong. Oh, I'm always right. So uh, anybody have any final thoughts? We know Rob wants us to hurry up. James, Ryan, anything? And there we have it. Let's go. Well, thanks for listening to the Mad Trio Plus One. R Ryan, did, did you have anything do you want to end this at? I mean, come on. Let's, I don't want to cut you off. <laughs> well, actually, I was pondering something. Now I'm getting <laughs> Ah, figures. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, use the word pondering. Just, just, yeah, or pandering, ladies and gentlemen, for the Cal sentence. for the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man, Stevens, Ryan, who the fuck is this, Preston, and the old guy. As always, Goodbye. thanks for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>